This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. This is an intro. Who needs an intro? I don't need an intro. This is just a vape show. It's just a vape show. Vape show. Vape show. YouTube, what is up? I'm your homeboy, own boy Josh. Good to be back again. And today, taking a look at another sample box installment that I'm still catching up on. Like I said, I have about five boxes of this stuff that have yet to be opened just because, yeah, we had that hiatus for a couple months back and I'm still, you know, it's gonna take a little while for me to get caught up. Anyway. So we open up this box, we got this bit of a sticker with an RDA on it that says vape what you love. Example box, the original vape family. Cool. Some stickers, a top three chart. Maybe I'll actually remember to photograph it this time, wouldn't that be nice? And we have a flavor menu and I just grabbed it randomly. Looks like this is the box I got in December. So we're working our way through randomly. I'm not sure which box is which. Looks like we got some sherbet, we got some donuts, we got some strawberry and cereal and bubble gum and mango and deep fried ice cream and all kinds of good stuff. I really love how they started doing this, where they show what the uh, actual contents were worth. Like this would be like the $60 box basically. And I remember when the waffles and I used to get sample box back in the day, they didn't come with this menu. And they did, definitely didn't tell you how much every bottle was worth, what they went for price-wise or anything like that. And me, I never really cared about that kind of thing. I just like getting a box of juice in the mail. But for her, she's always in, you know, cost value kind of thing between the two of us. And she likes to look up every bottle and she likes to see what it went for and how much juice we got, what we paid, and that kind of thing. She loves doing that kind of thing. She's the kind of person that loves to tell me what kind of deal she got at the Bath and Body Works. <laughs> that's, that's what Waffles likes to do. But it's kind of cool that now all that work is done for you and it just shows you what the box's retail value was and the cost of every bottle that you got. I think that's kind of neat. I like that. I think we'll start with the Blue Raz Bubble. That's a fun box, huh? This, if you can't already tell, is a uh, Blue Raspberry Bubble Gum. Which is definitely not gonna be for me, but I'll give it a try, see what it's like. White bottle with some uh, blue-haired raver check in the front. <laughs> awesome, party kids. Yeah, definitely get the, the bubble gum on the nose and, and the blue raspberry, absolutely. Get both of them right on the nose. We're vaping today out of the Aeronaut. What I like to do when I'm sampling juices out of the Aeronaut, it's great for doing juice reviews, it's great for sampling juice. What I like to do is I cut the cotton, I cut the cotton so it's right across the deck and I don't tuck the cotton into the, uh, the deck at all. It just kind of sits on top. I just juice up the bit of cotton right there. It makes it really, really easy for sampling juice. Just that little bit of cotton, so you're not wasting a bunch of juice in the process. Or cotton for that matter. It smells weird. The vapors smell weird. It's like peppery and sweet and odd. Huh. Yeah, those are some odd smelling vapors. Very odd. Um, it's a lot more bubble gum than blue raspberry. It's also got like a pepperiness to it. But I don't think it's the nicotine. It just tastes weird. Yeah, it doesn't taste anything like blue raspberry bubble gum. There's some weird like extra notes in there that don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, Pepto-Bismol, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, Pepto-Bismol has that, you know, bubble gum kind of flavor to it but it's like liquid form, you know, that, that's kind of what it's like. It's kind of like bubble gum in liquid form. It's very weird. It 
and like the a very thick syrupiness to it. And pepper. That is the most funked up juice ever. That's just gross. That's just so weird. Vubble is the brand. No, no, that's terrible. That's absolutely god awful. If that was bubble gum that I stole from the convenience store, I'd, I'd bring it back. Ugh, gross. Next up, Blue Label. Blue Label is the name of the juice. It's actually the name of the juice is called Blue Label. What an odd name. I guess named as such strictly because the label is blue? What do you think? Sugar cookie ice cream with strawberry. Hmm. I read some uh, very entertaining news bulletin the other day that the CDC director, uh, Brenda Fitzgerald, resigned, had to resign her post because it was found that she had a uh, stock in a J Japanese tobacco company. <laughs> uh, the irony and the hypocrisy are just wonderful, people, just wonderful. Apparently she invested somewhere between $1,000 and $15,000 in a tobacco company. <laughs> Director of the CDC. That ain't bad. Yeah, it's very creamy, very straw, good strawberry, uh, good cream, ice cream kind of flavor behind it, good base. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Still a little peppery, a little peppery on the nicotine. Yeah, not the best quality nicotine in some of these juices, I gotta say. I wanna like it, but that pepperiness kinda ruins it for me, I gotta say. Artist liquids. It's got that nice bakery note from the, uh, the sugar cookie too. Yeah, the nicotine ain't great though. Kind of disappointing. Sugar punch. A lot of uh, a lot of candy and fruity flavors in this batch. I don't get anything on the nose. Something. I don't even know. Yeah, it was particularly nice to read that headline about the CDC though. This was in Time Magazine. Particularly nice to see that after hearing about the craziness that was going on in Malaysia. Uh, after I did my that review on some of that Malaysian juice, someone left a comment about how Malaysian uh, Malaysia was done with vaping like forever. And I was like, what the? Because last I remembered from what I'd heard of Malaysia, the one of the biggest you know, uh, countries for vaping. Um, apparently, some people said it was second only to the United States. And I was really impressed to when I when I'd heard about that. And then, I mean, so many companies, mod makers, juice makers, I'm always hearing about Malaysia, that the Malaysian vape community is huge. And then I hear that vaping is done in Malaysia. And I started like checking out all these news articles on Malaysian vaping. And I found that that day, that same day, hours before I put out that juice review and those several Malaysian juices, the pharmaceutical services wing of the Ministry of Health had raided all the vape shops in, in uh, I wanna say it was Kuala Lumpur, the capital. They'd taken all the juices that had nicotine in them. And not only that, had taken their nicotine suppliers list. So all the receipts that these companies had from their nicotine suppliers, the pharmaceutical services wing of the Ministry of Health confiscated those all and they were gonna go after those suppliers. I was like, what the fuck? That's crazy. And I started doing more and more research and I found that Basically, there's three governing bodies behind the vape community in Malaysia. Um, there's the Ministry of Health that governs uh, juices that have nicotine in them. There's another organization that governs 
uh, juices without nicotine. And there's another organization that regulates batteries and mods and hardware and that kind of thing. So it's kind of split into these three groups. And the Ministry of Health is like this really large organization that does all kinds of things. And the pharmaceutical services wing is the sector that deals with like prescription medication and making sure there aren't counterfeit drugs on the market and making sure that, you know, nicotine, which is illicit, they're only medical practitioners and those that have licenses to uh, use nicotine are permitted to actually have it. They're responsible for completing, you know, initiating raids against companies that have it. But this whole thing with companies being raided and nicotine being, you know, confiscated and that kind of thing was kind of like a soft launch of it in the end of like November of uh, 2015. So when they descended upon these vape shops, the pharmaceutical services wing backed by a bunch of police and all that, it was kind of like a surprise move. And apparently the rest of the Ministry of Health, according to the article I read, didn't really know about it. It was all very, very strange. Very strange. Mm. That is a that is not a fruit punch. What is that? Sugar punch is a strawberry glazed donut. Huh. Well, how about that? It's a strawberry glazed donut. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of bakery in there, which was a nice surprise because I was expecting like fruit punch. Mmm, that's fucking delightful. That's really good. Pura Vida Juice Co. Which is I have spoken in Washington. <laughs> but Pura Vida is a very like Costa Rican phrase. <laughs> That's weird. Mm. That's really good. The strawberry is not too um, candy-like, and the donut is very deep, very luscious donut. Um, it's almost like there's strawberry glaze, but it feels like there's strawberry inside this donut with like actual strawberries in there, like a strawberry jam, like a thick strawberry jam kind of thing. That's really yummy. Mm. Yeah, that's a strawberry glazed donut win. That's fantastic. Mm. Very hearty vape. Very coats your insides. Really nice. Really nice. Love it. Very warm, very thick. Really nice in, you know, February. Absolutely. I'm going to enjoy this juice this month. That's great. I'm not a strawberry lover, so... Yeah, and delving into what's going on in Malaysia, it's gotten more and more fascinating. Like, um, Malaysia has like one of the largest cigarette smoking populations. Like 65% of adults actually smoke cigarettes there. And like one fifth of that actually vape. And 11% of, almost 12% of youth actually smoke cigarettes as well. So it's a very, very, um, and cigarettes are and cigarettes are cheap too. There's something like two bucks for a pack and they also sell like packs of 10 as opposed to 20 so they're even cheaper to get. So it's a very smoker friendly sort of country. And this is despite um, it being a predominantly Muslim country. The Fatwa Council is this governing body of Muslims in Malaysia, and they make the decisions as to what's considered haram, meaning you know something that's sort of outlawed in uh, Muslim uh, for the Muslim people. They outlaw all kinds of things. They outlaw yoga. Uh, they outlaw death metal. They outlaw wagyu beef. <laughs> Basically, anything that's considered to be like this, something that's a um, uh, that can be detrimental to the body in any way goes against you know the Muslim doctrine in Malaysia and goes against the Fatwa Council and they outlaw smoking yet everyone continues to smoke and then they outlaw vaping and a lot of the state governments in Malaysia take this as an invitation that they can go in and put outright bans on vaping and nicotine and all that and that happens in 2015 in 2014 
You know, vaping in Malaysia is like, it was second only to the United States, basically, is what they say. They say it was second only to the United States, though some people say that the, in Europe it was still, you know, more popular than Malaysia. And the population of vapors drops over the course of, you know, 2015 through today from something like, you know, 1.2, somewhere between 500,000 and 1.2 million down to about 200,000 people because of the religious, um, Fatwa Council stepping in and saying that, you know, vaping is haram and the state and local governments um, outlawing it state by state. Although the, the federal government in Malaysia says they're going to take more of a hands-off approach for the time being until now, today, you know, last week, we're seeing, you know, vape shops getting raided in the capital. Meanwhile, Jarum and Dunhill, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I was big on Dunhill cigarettes when I was a smoker. If I really wanted to spoil myself, I'd get a Dunhill box. And Jarums, I always hated Jarums when I was a cigarette smoker, but people I used to smoke cigarettes with, you know, out in the school alleyways and whatnot, they were always smoking Jarums. Those two companies have a huge stake in Malaysia. They're big, big companies in Malaysia. So economics of the country definitely comes into play there. I mean, for, for with their analysis, it was less expensive for vapors to vape than it was, you know, for smokers to keep smoking and therefore more money coming into the country, which means they, you know, they, they want their money too, is the thing, you know. Whoa, that smells really good. It smells spicy. It smells creamy. Ooh, that smells delightful. What is it? Let's find out. I'm excited. Toasty. Something toasty and spicy on the nose. Uh, brown sugar. Very sweet, very bakery. That is righteous. Mm. What is it? I don't even know. Blue from Ghost Vapor is vanilla with salted caramel. Mm. That's very good. That's very, very good. Um, yeah, I definitely get the salted caramel for sure, for sure. Mmm. Yeah. That's like a Talenti ice cream or something. That's what that tastes like. It tastes like something that Talenti ice cream made. You like Talenti? I fucking love Talenti. That's good shit right there. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say I would choose Talenti over haagen -Dazs. Don't shoot me. I would. I would. I'd go for Talenti over haagen -Dazs. I would. Damn. That's great. That's great. I like that one very much. And similar to the U.S., Malaysia has, you know, a national cancer society that puts out a lot of, you know, misinformation and a lot of propaganda against vaping. That it's all for the, against, you know, we have to save the children and blah, 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 and vaping's just as unsafe as cigarettes, we don't know what's in these materials, diacetyl is gonna destroy our lungs, blah, 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 all that crap. So they have the same sort of bodies, similar bodies that the US has, that helps to um, make these anti-vaping moves and anti-vaping decisions, and it makes it easy for state and governments to find ways to outlaw uh, vaping with you know these these sorts of fake studies and all that on their side all in the interest of preserving you know the tobacco conglomerate in Malaysia not to mention in in Malaysia they have religion on their side too and they also have the poisons act 
The Poisons Act stated that nicotine was illegal and only um, legitimate, you know, medical pharmaceutical companies could work with nicotine. So it makes it that much harder on companies in Malaysia, which is unfortunate. There's a, I remember reading one article where the National Cancer Society was saying how a drop of nicotine on the fingers and that would uh, destroy, cause cellular um, mutations and all that kind of crap. But you know, vapors as a whole, consumer vapors, we're not working with that shit. We're not working with, you know, just pure nicotine generally, unless you're a mixer, you know? But, you know, you take that out of context, out of the context of this being, you know, this whole bottle containing only three, three milligrams of nic, as opposed to, you know, pure concentrated nicotine, you know, it's enough to scare people is the thing, you know. You cannot use liquid nicotine no matter how small the dosage for fear that its absorption into the bloodstream may produce mutations which create chemical imbalance in the cells. That's the direct quote from uh, the National Cancer Society, uh, Dali, I can't pronounce names, Dalila Kamarudin. Yeah. That's why, you know, people that work with pure nicotine, vapors that DIY and use pure nicotine, they work with gloves. <laughs> That's the answer. Uh, anyway, this is Ghost. Uh, another one from Ghost. And uh, I don't know what flavor it is. It doesn't say. Oh no, Parfait. Uh, one guess what that is. Okay. Oh, fuck that. No. It's not a parfait, that's trick cereal. I fucking, ugh, fuck. No, I don't fucking like trick cereal. Not at all. I don't like it. That's what it tastes like, it tastes like trick cereal. No. Parfait my ass. Strawberry yogurt and cereal. Yeah. That's not what a parfait is. A parfait is yogurt and fruit. It's not yogurt and cereal. God. That's terrible. Terrible. Yes, yeah, so I don't remember if it was like this when I used to get my original sample boxes, but you take out the partition and then there's you know a whole other series of juice underneath. It's a lot of fucking juice, man. Another one from Bubble. Ooh. We're gonna have good luck with the first one. We'll see. I do love the boxes though. They have that three-dimensional quality. Like in the corner, you got the guy, you know, popping a bubble. I like that. This dude has stubble. <laughs> I like that his beard has stubble. So this one's clearly a uh, strawberry uh, bubble gum. Um, on the nose, it smells like strawberries, like fresh strawberries. I doubt that's what it vapes like. The vapors smell like uh, condensed strawberry milk. It's weird. It doesn't taste like strawberry bubble gum, but the strawberry is really interesting. It's nice. It's um, a strawberry exploration. <laughs> it's all kinds of different strawberries. It's uh, strawberry syrup, it's fresh strawberries, it's strawberry jam, it's all kinds of things. It's a, it's a strawberry explosion. Good throat hit too. That one's not half bad, not half bad. It's very tart strawberry too. A lot of strawberry feels. That's, that's different. It's different. Not what I was expecting and way better than the other one. Way, way, way better than the blue raspberry. But not because it tastes like strawberry bubblegum. It still doesn't taste like strawberry bubblegum. Polaris from Dr. Fog. We had a good, pretty good experience with Dr. Fog last time. One of those juices was fantastic. The other one, not so much. Raspberry deep fried ice cream. 
It was interesting the, in Malaysia, the response to the Fatwa Council's decision, like proponents of vaping there, they said they were looking at a, um, a quote, a nuanced interpretation of Haram, saying that, you know, if you were a former cigarette smoker and moving to vaping as a way to um, get away from you know, the carcinogens and you know, the dangers of smoking actual cigarettes, you know, 4,000 plus chemicals and moving to vaping as a safer alternative, then that was okay. And uh, apparently, according to shop owners there, like the majority of their customers, even after that, were still, you know, Muslims. Which makes sense considering, you know, the population of Malaysia is predominantly Muslim, but found that thought that was interesting. Hmm, I smell the raspberry. Eh, I don't know. Sometimes raspberry vapes, when you mix them with creams, or they can go sideways. We'll see. I smell uh, like the, the, the brown sugar in the bakery, the deep fried, yeah, deep fried ice cream. Yeah, that smells great. Mmm. Yeah, that's great. Oh, that man, that's really good. Ah, uh, fuck, that deep fried bakery is what does it for me. Uh, but then the raspberry note at the end is, you know, kind of milked down, a lot of milkiness to the raspberry at the end, that the last note, I don't know. Some people might like that. I'm not crazy about the raspberry when it mixes with the milk. Mm, it's still good though. I, mm. Yeah, the bakery is just fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with that juice. The bakery's great. The raspberry at the end, I don't like so much. Maybe if I make it a little warmer, cook it off a bit faster, we'll see. That brings out more of the raspberries in the beginning. Mm. I think lower is better. Back around 80. Let's bring it down even to 75. Let's see. Put a little more juice on there. The way that the deck is designed in the aeronaut, when I'm just sampling juice, I've just got a little bit of cotton. It makes it really easy just to paint the coil. Really easy to sample juice with this. double-edged sword. If I turn it up, the raspberry kind of infuses with the inhale in the bakery. If I turn it down, the bakery, I get that first and foremost, but I get more of the raspberry at the end. Let's turn it back up to about 85. No raspberry. No raspberry. A little bit of raspberry there. Mess around. It's funny how if you mess around with the wattages in that vape, you get very different experiences in terms of where the raspberry comes in, if it comes in at all, how strong the bakery notes are. It's a fun juice. The Dr. Fogs, they're really fun to mess around with the wattages and get different experiences out of the vape. I don't know, we'll put that in the maybe pile. That's not bad, but I don't like the raspberry note at the end. Another Dr. Fogg's Alpha, which is a watermelon tropical sherbet. Hmm. That, sometimes sherbet can be pretty awesome. Sometimes watermelon can be really bad. Oh, it smells really good on the nose. Like really, really nice watermelon notes on the nose. Problem is watermelon vapes that can be really salty sometimes is what I've noticed. Sometimes watermelon vapes get this really weird salty note. Ooh, on the nose, it's a very tropical, yeah, tropical watermelon, tropical, watermelon tropical sherbet. It smells very tropical. Yeah, it smells really good on the nose. I'm afraid it's gonna be salty. I worry about watermelon vapes.
I'm waiting for the salty note. Mm. I close my eyes, I'm just seeing like watermelon gelato and watermelon sherbet, someone serving it to me soft serve style. That's really fucking good. That is, I'm still tasting the watermelon. That's the best watermelon vape I've ever had. Finally, someone got watermelon right. I've never had the experience with watermelon. Every watermelon vape I've ever had has had like this salty weird note to it. And this one, maybe just slightly, maybe just, but it's the best watermelon I've ever had. And the tropical in there is nice. Maybe like some papaya or something in there. Yeah, I get papaya. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. Really good. Impressed with that one. Very impressed. Oh yeah, that's great. I guess the thing that disturbs me the most about the whole thing in Malaysia is how, how fast a situation can digress. Um, in 2014, there's this guy that travels to Malaysia for a vape convention and he writes how Malaysia is a vape wonderland, how there's a thousand vendors at this vape convention, how there's all these attendees, and it's, it's considered to be the last bastion of hope for vapors in the Southern Pacific. And, uh, you know, Cambodia, Singapore, Indonesia, they've all gone the way of pretty much outlawing vaping completely. Whereas Malaysia, they've taken a very open attitude to it all. And that's 2014. And then 2017, it goes from 600 shops in the capital, Kuala Lumpur, down to around no more than 200. And the vape population goes from something like 500,000 plus down to no more than 200,000 or so. And then we're seeing raids, uh, more and more raids, you know, wiping out the nicotine supply. It's disheartening to say the least, very disheartening. So yeah, when I uh, read about the CDC director <laughs> getting her ass handed to her, that was a nice, nice article. <laughs> uh, up next is Bay from FJ's e-liquid. This is a uh, what fucking Jerry? Is that what it's called? I forget what they were called. Fucking Jerry. That's a tangy mango ice cream sorbet. Fuck Jerry. That's what it is. Yeah. A lot of people don't like this company. Mango smells kind of sour. We'll see. Fuck Jerry's mango sorbet. They call themselves FJ's Juice now. Yeah, I think this company fell under a lot of fire because they marketed their juice after um, Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Yeah, so a lot of people don't like them for that. Very sour mango on the nose. Um. Like a really sour mango that lingers. Uh, not very sweet mango, um, a little bit sour, uh, a little bit soapy in the aftertaste. Yeah, no, it smells, it tastes like soap. Yeah. Uh, reject pile. Yeah. There is hope for Malaysia. I'd like to think that there is. Similarly to the U.S., you know, we have a lot of vape advocacy, you know, organizations. Um, you know, the U.S. we have CASA, we have Not Blowing Smoke, we have the Vaping Militia. We've got a lot of good ones. They have MEVTA, M-E-V-T-A. MEVTA would be the Malaysian E-Vaporizers and Tobacco Alternatives Association. You know, their their assurance is, you know concerning but hopeful um, they talk about how in brunei and singapore vaping is banned but sales are still huge 
they talk about if you look at the prohibition era of the United States, you can see you know just how successful any sort of ban actually can be. You know, so there's always hope, but I'd say that you're likely going to see a bit of a black market in Malaysia for some time. That would be my prediction. I think that's what we'd see with any sort of you know vaping ban. We'd see some sort of black market arise, and I don't know. There's always hope. Decoded. <laughs> Looks all very Matrix-like. Uh, Bigfoot mini donuts. <laughs> None of this is real anyway, so... Vape them if you got them. The Earth is flat and, you know, we're all suffering from the Mandela effect, so... <laughs> That's weird. Oh, God. <sighs> Not a fan. It's like a bakery and fish brine. What the fuck? Out of uh, Vancouver, Canada by Decoded. Wow. No. Ugh. It tastes like that's that what happens with uh, cobbler vapes. How they, ugh. They just do like this weird thing with cobbler vapes where the bakery and just feel, taste really weird and like fishy. Never met a good cobbler vape and that's what that tastes like. Last one. Coastal Clouds, the Traveler. It's hard to look at what happened in Malaysia and not feel some kind of fear about something similar happening in the United States. And then you think of what happened in Indiana with lockouts of companies coming through because of you know shady political decisions. You realize that in some ways similar things have already happened, you know? But I guess that's that's where hopes come in in a lot of ways, you know. It's important to keep that in mind. Things can always turn around. So do I think vaping is done in Malaysia? No. I think that they've got a long road ahead of them, but I'm an optimist at heart. Uh, like pomegranate, something like pomegranate. Yeah, something pomegranate, like something tart and fruity. Mm. As far as tart and fruity goes, yeah, it's pretty good. It's like making my face flush. Like it's it's really tart and sour. That's good. The Traveler from Coastal Clouds is Italian ice with orange, mango, and tart lemon. Yeah, like I'm like kind of sweating a little bit right here. That is really tart, tart and sweet. Yeah, it gives you that kind of burn like an Italian ice does. You know, like the like makes your tongue burn in that in that kind of you know, citrusy kind of, uh, it's so, yeah, it's like a smack in the face. It's really good. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's one of the best of the bunch for what it accomplishes, I say. Yeah, that one's really great. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it cools you down and heats you up at the same time. All right, so if I'm gonna choose a top three this time, I'd have to say, it's definitely not decoded, it goes in the reject pile. Uh, definitely this Pura Vida Sugar Punch. I'd say it's first. No, no, this blue from Ghost is first. I'd say this one's second. And then I'd say this one from Coastal Clouds, The Traveler. It's not really my kind of vape, but for what it accomplishes, the way that it's, it's not like anything I've ever vaped before in just how tart it is and how, um, how, how much like an Italian ice it can be. How it's so uh, tart and cooling that it almost breaks you out and sweats uh, a little bit. 
just because of how tart it is. That's impressive. I'm gonna put that in third. That's that's impressive. Not my kind of vape generally, but I like what it does. And uh, the Alpha, the watermelon tropical sherbet uh, from Dr. Fogg, would be an honorable mention. I would say oh, those are pretty good. The other two I didn't hate were the uh, Polaris and the uh, the Bubble, the strawberry Bubble. Those are pretty pretty decent too. Uh, the rest are the reject pile. Anyway, hope I wasn't too much of a downer today. I mean, just when you feel down, just think of, you know, CDC director Brenda Fitzgerald having to resign. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> Until next time, uh, I'm your own boy, own boy Josh. Vape on vapors. <laughs>